Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today I want to talk about a potential problem with Morse, Morse tapers uh, that if they're not, if you're not turning between centers with a particular device, they can rattle loose, cause damage to your uh, Morse taper on your spindle, as well as uh, cause a safety problem. So uh, I've got a solution for you today, so stay tuned. I want to give this shout out to John Weeman and Rodney Page for suggesting this video. Thanks y'all. Alright, so here's some example of some Morse, Morse tapers. These right here, they've got little holes in them where they were machined to hold the center, but these are not threaded. Uh, this one is threaded, this uh, drill. This collet chuck is, is uh, threaded. So what we're going to do is make a draw bar to hold these. If you're turning between centers, as shown in this scene where you've got tailstock support, then you don't need to be concerned about a draw bar. But if you've got something free, uh, a Morse taper, especially where it gets lateral pressure, such as this one with this, this beetle buff on it, uh, it's very important. It's also important if you're using a drill chuck on the lathe, uh, mounted on the, on the spindle. So for a beetle buff, where you're going to get a lot of lateral pressure, it's important that you use a use a draw bar. In this case it's a quarter inch draw bar. So when you use a uh, drill chuck or Jacobs chuck in the tail stock where it's unsupported, you're pushing work into the drill, it's, it is very important that you you use a draw bar because otherwise it can, it can wobble loose. Now I have two drill chucks, one of them for turning this golden goose is not bad. It's threaded for a quarter inch rod. The other one is not threaded, so I don't use that in the in the headstock very often uh, because it's too easy for the thing to get as you're pulling work away to, to dislodge this and, and possibly cause an accident. Now, some devices need a quarter inch rod, some need a three eighths. If you're making your own, you could choose to do something uh, different. Uh, this one uses a quarter inch, this one uses a quarter inch, this is uses three eighths and that's my cutter, my threading cutter on this three eighths inch collet. Now this, this has been cut to fit uh, for my, my mini lathe. Alright, I'm using my little Jet Mini for a bill buff primarily, but before I use it for that, and it, when it was my primary lathe, uh, I use this Golden Goose Jacobs Chuck with this little draw bar on the back with just a wing nut. Actually, a large uh, threaded knob might work even, even better than a wing nut. This is one I've got with just a knob. You know, and I can, I can adjust it. Uh, I can tighten it by just turning the knob and, and threading it. But, uh, and this works fine with this uh, drill, uh, drill chuck where basically I'm just snugging it up a little bit. Uh, same thing with this Morse taper if I'm just uh, snugging up a little bit. But what I found for this one where I'm having to really pull down on it to tighten this collet, I want a little different design. I want one with a handle that I can just screw it in and that handle will fit flush against the, the tail stock uh, or the hand wheel rather. And, and tighten it up. So that's what we're going to work on today. Alright, so I've got the collet in there. I'm just going to slide this rod in and, and thread it until it's almost snug. Back off a, a, a turn. And that's where I need to have have my handle end right here. So I'm going to mark this and that's how how deep the hole I need to drill. Alright, so we're going to turn this, we're going to just rough out this nice piece of persimmon, uh, very hard wood, and we're going to put a tenon on each end. Alright, first thing I'm going to do, 
We've got a little bit of a crack, but we're going to get rid of most of this as we shorten this. So the first thing I've got to do, let's put a couple of 10 ends on it for the chuck. I don't want to get it too small. Let's go ahead and mount that on the, on the chuck. Standard 50 millimeter jaws. We need to shorten this. We don't want to make it too long, and I think this will be plenty big enough here. And let's go ahead and part that off with a thin parting tool. Get my 16th of an inch parting tool off. Let's slow it down a little bit. To Finish it, finish parting off. So now we got a nice flat surface. This is going to be the uh, part that mounts against the, the hand wheel. I'm going to take a skew and just I'm going to take a finishing cut here. Make a little bit of a starter hole. that drill bit. I've got a little bit of crack here that we're going to uh, fill in. It's not going to really affect its structural, its, its structural integrity. So I'm going to use this thin CA and just flood the area a little bit. And then I'm going to take some sawdust that I'm picking up from around the, the shavings, fine shavings that I'm picking up from around the lathe bed and just kind of work that in. And then we're going to get some sandpaper, 120, and just kind of work it in a little bit. Well, I tell that dust I put in here looks like Osage orange. Won't match too well, but that's okay. I just want a nice smooth surface to grab hold of, so I think that'll do it. Next thing I'm going to do that's drying, I'm going to put a I'm going to put just a tiny little groove here, and that's what the chuck's going to hold on to when we finish off the bottom. So we're just going to add that with a point tool. Now, if your jaws may not be able to do this, but on the Techna tool, because they, they're not a true dovetail, you make a parallel tenon, but this will grab it very well. And makes a design feature, and then I'm just going to round over the front here a little bit. Now, let's get set up to drill. I usually use, I usually drill from the tailstock, and because I'm normally putting pressure on it, uh, and, and I'm always careful to say keep your left hand on it when you're extracting, uh, I, I'm not using a draw bar because this is not drilled. This is my preferred chuck because it's keyless. Uh, you probably would be safer if you're u drilling here. Uh, to minimize the chance of this coming loose by using one and, and using a draw bar. Uh, to have a draw bar that will extend through your tailstock that's that works the same way. Now this one is not a real good one. It's a quarter inch and I'm not because I'm not using this I'm not going to shorten this because I usually use this on the headstock but you could use this and drill this all the way uh, turn this knob all the way down until it's it's snug. Uh, frankly it's more trouble than I want to mess with right now so I'm going to switch back to the other one take this out and replace it with the other drill, drill chuck. Tighten that up. Alright we're going to drill a hole uh, to the depth we marked on the other uh, on the the length of the the coarse rod all right, so rather than measure this right here, I'm going to just set it up against it and put tape, and that's how deep that hole needs to needs to be. Okay, now we're going to drill a hole down to the appropriate depth, no more than about 1,100 speed. Again, I put my hand here in case when I'm retracting. I can I can feel it, it's coming loose since it doesn't have a draw bar in it. 
and now we've got that in good shape. All right, now we're going to go ahead and reverse chuck this thing. I've got the hole drilled. I sanded the front here a little bit. I've got a nice groove that will catch this right here and hold it very snugly. So now I can finish uh, shaping off the, the back side of the handle. I'm just going to round it off first with a spindle gouge. Yeah, you know, about 1,200 or more. Just get rid of that tenon. Faced off here just a little bit. And now I think what I want to do is I'm going to add some spirals here just because we can, uh, and it'll give it'll give us a little better. Uh, Make it a little easier to hold on to it, so let me hit it with a with a sandpaper for just a moment. This is a tool handle, so it doesn't have to be beautiful. Okay, so now we've got this uh, got this adjusted with this the largest uh, spiraling bit I've got, and we're just going to engage this here on the end. Gives a nice, nice effect. Speed up a little bit. Actually, need to raise the height just a little bit. And we just put just a little bit of a bead there. This is the way it needs to go right here. Just use a little woven pad to get rid of the frizzies. And there's our there's our handle. We're going to take it loose and glue it. So we're just going to mix up a little of this five minute epoxy. Equal parts. Hardener and resin. We'll stir it up real good. Now we're going to drip some of this inside our hole. We're going to put some on the threads and then we're going to add this in and push it down in there until it bottoms out. It's important that it bottoms out in the hole because we're going to sometimes pound on the back of this so it uh, which will drive this force down in and dislodge our Morse taper so and we're just going to let that dry for a while and come back. I like to use these large rubber uh, bands to keep the thing from scratching or bumping inside. Uh, believe it or not, these are castrating bands. I'm not a veterinarian and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express. Um, I got this idea from Lyle Jameson where he uses these things to turn and turn off a, a laser for, for hollowing. Just see it just runs over the knob uh, the button and, and turns it on and off. So when I use that 3 8 straw bar to pull in this collet chuck it gets it gets nice and snug then when time comes to remove it I can unthread the knob but the collet is still stuck so what I like to do is just kind of unthread it and then I whack on it with a mallet and that releases the collet. Now I could just completely unthread this uh, and then use a knockout bar, but this is faster and easier for me. That's why I want that thread, threaded rod to seat all the way in the bottom of the hole. Y'all come on back for more video that inspires and teaches wood turning. Y'all stay safe here. Needs a little adjustment and turns it on and turns it off.